So what's going on guys, DIY Dan, Saltwater Junkie here again. And today I'm adding a couple of algae scrubbers to my 210 display with 229 displays all running off one sump filtration behind the wall. So for those of you guys who have not seen this system before, that's my main drains and supply coming through the wall, going into the first section of my sump here, second section of the sump, and then I have the supplies for the algae scrubbers that I just built are actually the supply for the refugium, and then they drain back to the sump as well. So here's the two new algae scrubber screens that I have assembled. We're going to go over a basic overview on this. If you want a little bit more detailed as far as building one, uh, I do have another algae scrubber build on my channel. Go to that. I've also got a video explaining the bracketry and what I use to do that as well. Uh, so you can check those out on my channel if you need to. Now, obviously, I've got two different bulbs on here. Uh, this is a PAR38 LED bulb. In this one, I just have a 100-watt CFL bulb. Okay, So I'm really curious as to compare these two and see how much better my PAR38 is going to do to this one. All right, so that's the reason for running the two different kinds of bulbs. Plus, I've got two different size pumps on this. So I'm going to show you the flow difference on the, on the algae scrubbers. Okay, there's that one right there. Now, the screens are identical in size. They're pretty much a full sheet. So they're 9.5 by 11, give or take a little bit, okay, on those knitting mesh screens. So I'm going to disconnect these and uh, show you a basic overview of how I put this thing together. So let's get to it. I like using these unions here because this is just super easy. You just unscrew it there. Lay this off to the side. And I'm gonna pull my algae screens right up and out. These ones, they work great when they're new, but they will get loose and start leaking on you later. So that's a nice, easy disconnect also. But I have had these start to leak on other things I've used them for. So that's why most likely I'm gonna go with the Union and change this up. So originally I just had my refugium light. So I had this bar and the two outside cross members. When I decided to do the algae scrubber, I shifted this bar and I offset it to this side so I'd have room for the algae scrubbers in the back. I then made an additional two cross members here, cut my side plates. Now I cut those, these are nine inches high. I cut them at 18, used a hole saw, drilled those, then cut it in half. So it basically gave me a half moon. And then I sanded these out a little bit so it perfectly contoured the PVC I was using. All right. These side plates are anchored from the bottom with some three inch screws through the one by twos. And those were countersunk as well. So obviously they sit flush under there. Okay, I did that on all four. Then I cut four cross members to put across the back to hold my side plates nice and stout. And those are anchored in from the side here. Okay. Same thing on both sides. I did use some of this corrugated plastic and I anchored it with four screws. And that was basically to reflect the light also to keep any splashing from the algae scrubber going from behind my tank. Then I go, went ahead and added a reinforcement uh, between the two side plates here just to stiffen this up. And I also added a reinforcement to the two cross middle cross members to uh, hold those nice and tight together as well. This light fixture was about 10 bucks at Walmart. Uh, so my wife says I kind of stole it from her. And I just anchored that with a plastic screw so I don't have to worry about that rusting out, okay? This is just a, a one of the heat lamps for like a reptile tank that I've just got that 100 watt fluorescent LED bulb in. Uh, basic, you know, $2 bulb at Home Depot or Lowe's. And this is just to try the difference between them and do some experimentation with it.
All right, so to uh, cut the groove for the algae scrubber screen, I use a four inch grinder with a cutoff wheel. Uh, you could probably use a Dremel. I've used my miter saw before, but the groove was a little wider than what I'd like it to be. So I ended up using my grinder on this one. I always position the zip ties where you're not going to get a zip tie cut because then things are like 10 times worse than a paper cut. So I'm just angling all those down where I'm not going to have my hands when, when I'm doing the maintenance on this thing. So I've gone over this before but I use this uh, clear cleaner versus the primer so it doesn't, uh, so it has a cleaner look to it. You don't have that purple primer all over there. And then I also time my fittings. So all the barcodes are facing down or away from my line of sight when it's assembled to give it a cleaner look. The only thing I'm going to glue is the pieces that are on the outside of my tank because obviously I don't want them dripping. So everything else on this I'm just going to push into each other and I think it'll work out just fine. So this is just a little better close up look of the actual PVC guys. This is the tube that I ground the slot in to hold the, the nip mesh. Uh, those were the 90s I was gluing together there. A couple short pieces of PVC and then a T with some uh, female threads on it. Now this is a PEX plumbing push together. Uh, I had this. So I'm using it for now. I'm not a big fan of these. They will start to leak over time. Uh, but I had it, so I went ahead and used it for now. I prefer this type of uh, PVC union. Uh, they've worked out really, really well for me. Uh, I do need to get a little better quality hose so I don't get any kinks and restricts and flow like I've got going on right here. All right, guys. So I've got about a week's worth of growth on this algae screen, and I've got two weeks worth of growth on this screen. Uh, I got this one assembled a week earlier than I did this one. So uh, the bulbs actually seem to be doing about the same. I'll be doing an update in about a month maybe and show you guys how we're coming along with this. And uh, then we'll maybe try switching the pumps uh, and try that and see what happens. So hope you guys enjoyed this build and hope it showed you something. And hopefully see you next time. Have a good one. Later.